Today, we're going to create a CAM drawing, and you can choose one of four CAMs to put into your automata. So let's first look at the assignment. It's here in Google Classroom. All right, here it is. Uh, we're going to recreate the CAM drawing that you did months ago in class, but because we don't have access to the laptops in class, we're going to do this in Fusion 360. So first, you're going to choose a CAM amongst one of these four CAMs that's shown in this drawing. I'm going to choose the pair cam, but you're welcome to choose any of these. You'll notice that the dimensions are based on D. D is a nominal diameter, and we're going to choose 2.0 inches. If we go back to my instructions, um, your second instruction is to choose 1.5 or 2.0 inches for the diameter, nominal diameter D. Anything larger won't fit into your automata box. All right, there's a few more instructions about the hole size um, that we want to make a square. But if you are using a hole, make sure it's a larger one at 21 and 64 diameter, a round hole. And then lastly, make the cam thickness 3 eighths of an inch, not 3 sixteenths of an inch. So let's talk more about the, what we're going to do and what the diameter dimensions are. All right, so if the nominal diameter D is 2.0, the radius of this big circle is half of 2.0 or 1.0. However, when we dimension in Fusion 360, we're going to be using the diameter. So if the radius is 1.0 for the big circle, the diameter will be 2.0 inches. All right, similarly for the top circle, if the radius is a quarter of 2.0 or 0.5 inches, then the diameter will be 1.0 inch for the top circle. Lastly, um, we're going to align these centers of these two circles vertically, and we're going to separate them by half of D half of 2.0 is 1.0 inch. All right, so let's start our drawing. Okay, so before you start though, you do want to click on the waffle over here and create a new folder like mine, Automata. Uh, and the reason this is important is because you're going to be uh, not only drawing this cam, but you're going to be assembling an entire Automata and you're going to assemble parts and they should all go into your Automata folder. Okay, I'm closing the data panel by clicking on the waffle. And now I'm going to right click to start a sketch. I click on sketch. I want a center diameter circle. I'm clicking on the plane that I want to draw it in. I'm going to hover over the origin and click on the origin and drag. I'm going to type in 2.0 and hit enter. All right, now we're going to, we could finish sketch, but we're not, it's best not to because uh, you won't be able to use the constraints and the trim tool that we're going to need eventually, all these editing on this sketch. So we're going to stay in the one sketch that we're in now by just right clicking again, hitting sketch, center diameter circle for the upper circle. You notice I'm not putting it vertically of over the bottom one. Um, whoops, we should go back a step. Excuse me, sketch center point circle, click. I'm not doing it right above the other one to make a point. I did click and drag, and now I'm going to type in the diameter of the upper circle, which is one inch. You'll notice these are not vertically aligned, but we can do that by clicking on the horizontal vertical alignment tool. I'm going to click on both centers. I'm aligning the two centers vertically, so I had to click on both centers. Now, there is a, di a dimension. They need to be 1.0 inch apart. So I can click on the dimension, sketch dimension tool here. I can click on one center, the second center, and drag, and then click, and now type in the dimension 1.0 inch away from each other that I want. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and pan a little bit by clicking on the pan icon and then escaping from it. All right, so again, I still haven't clicked on Finish Sketch, and I don't want to yet because I'm going to add some lines, and I need them to be constrained, and then I'm going to be trimming some lines. So we're going to right-click, Sketch, this time a line. I'm going to draw it approximately on the circle, but not a big deal if you don't get it exactly. I come over and draw another line from the top circle to the bottom circle. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. But now we're going to constrain it because we want these lines to be tangent to that, those circles. So I click on the tangent constraint. Now you want to click on the two things you want to make tangent. In this case, the circle you can see becomes highlighted and the line becomes highlighted. 
and when you click on the line you do, do need to click on the end of the line that you want that you're working with at this point that you want to make tangent to something else so I'm clicking uh, towards the end the upper end of this line and then I'm clicking on the circle we know that these two are now tangent because we see the tangent icon similarly I'm going to come down here and click on this line it highlights for me and then on the circle those two are now known to be tangent we see the tangent constraint symbol similarly over here those two objects the line and circle and lastly on this line and the circle and again we, we see four tangent constraints for four tangent objects I'm still not going to click on finish sketch because I want to trim away these parts of the circles that I don't want so I come up here to the trim tool click on the scissors to trim away parts of the circle that I don't want this is not a part of the circle this is the dimension of the circle the top circle I'm still trimming I've trimmed down all the way to the bottom now we have a complete pair uh, object so now we can finally finish sketch okay we need a hole and uh, we could extrude at this point by the way but I'm gonna first create a hole a square hole and then we'll extrude everything so uh, if you were to right click and click on sketch um, there's only a two-point rectangle available to you that is a corner and a corner um, we don't want that so why don't we click on the create tool come down to rectangle let's find the create find create the rectangle tool excuse the delay okay so you saw my difficulty there um, you need to get to this point where when you click on the create tool you have this option where you can see the rectangle tools available to you um, so I think what happened that I did not do is when you first clicked on you have to click on the design first then on the plane that you're working with as you would have done before and then click on the create tool the create window all right so I'm coming down to rectangle I have a few choices and one of them is the center rectangle and the reason I want to choose this one is I want my hole my rectangular hole uh, centered at the at the origin where the bottom large hole is centered so, so I click on center rectangle I click first on the center where I want the center of the um, hole rectangle and then I drag so now before you click you need to type in the dimensions this is a 0 0.25 or 1 quarter inch I tab over to the other dimension 0 0.25 and now I can hit enter and I have two uh, sides of the uh, rectangle dimension to 0.25 or a square okay now I can finish sketch again okay I'm just gonna look at a 3d image of this and now I'm going to extrude it uh, by clicking first on the object then on the extrude I guess I didn't click well the first time okay so it doesn't matter which direction I go in here I can pull a little bit but I need to type in how big I want this I want it to be 3 eighths of an inch or 0.375 okay so now we have the thickness of the cam but you'll notice we still don't have a hole and you notice it looks like our square is on the other side so I'm just gonna move this over yeah let's do it this way instead okay so now we're going to click on this object zoom in a little bit better okay now we've clicked on the square we want to extrude that this is going to be a removal cut and again the dimension is 0 0.375 the thickness
And if you rotate this in different ways, you'll see that now we do have a, a cam with a square hole in it. And you're done. Thank you for listening.